What's up, everybody? Welcome to Guildcast 11 for February 22nd, 2012. You're watching Game Breaker TV. I'm Gary Gannon, and today, 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 we're just gonna chill. I don't know. Maybe talk about. League of talk about. Nah, I think we're gonna talk about League of Legends or something. Maybe I don't know. Just take a day off. Terra. Terra. Yeah. Terra's a good one. That's a good topic. We could talk about that all day, or we could just talk about Guild Wars 2 uh, Beta Weekend, which we all got to play. Yes, tons to talk about. Uh, but first, from Massively.com. Elizabeth Clare, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Welcome back. Welcome back. Good and to be back. of course, the one, the only beard himself is back, Mr. Sean Schuster. Missed you last week. Aw. It's not the same thing without you. <laughs> really nice. Well, I heard you had a good uh, a good replacement for me. Ashton was amazing. He's amazing. Ashton Kutcher. He's got a really <laughs> big Twitter following. He's great. Uh, <laughs> first up, uh, big news this morning, right? Beta, beta, beta. Go sign up for beta. Beta.guildwars.guildwars2.com. Everybody can start signing up for the uh, the beta. Crazy. What do you think? I 48 guess. Forty-eight hours. Forty-eight yep. hours. Uh, like forty-two left or something. So yes. Kind of down. I right. guess. Uh, I guess press beta weekend went kind of okay. You think? Sure. I mean, you could you could guess that, I suppose. I mean, by by, by by the news, they must have thought it, uh, on the inside. Yep, yeah, positive. Let's good, good to go, good to go. All right. So, if all of you haven't noticed all the insane amount of info and uh, content we've been putting up on our site, damn microphone! I'm gonna punch it. I'm gonna punch the mic. I've done it before. What the what what the, what the f is this? Look at. Hey, I'll put the mic over here. <laughs> hey, I'll put the mic over here. What's going on? What? Ah, don't worry about it. I don't know. I don't care. Screw it. We'll do it live. Do it live! <laughs> All right. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. So, we've been posting a ton of content to the new GameBreaker.tv site. If you haven't gone to it, you better get over there because there's a ton of good content and tons of good videos. Mike B's Battle of Ky uh, Kylo video is ridiculous. Um, there was some restrictions on what we could cover. Uh, we could not cover. The Silvari race and the Asura races were locked out from us. So we did not get anything on that. We got more video stuff coming. I got something I think I'm going to get posted tonight. You should watch that. I've got um, closing ceremony stuff. Or I guess you call it closing ceremony, but the, uh, the closing video stuff, though, from when the beta was over. Um, anything else I'm forgetting that we couldn't do? It was those races. Anything else? They, uh, they wouldn't let us uh, – well, they wouldn't even let us see anything about the uh, cash shop. I mean, I hate to say cash shop. It's just such a default In word. Store. Yeah, yes, we didn't see anything. Store. There you go. Yeah, we didn't see anything no. with that. No, not really. I'm just going to smash my mic. Hey, oh, can you guys hear me? Sound really good? Sound good? Yeah. Sorry. This is driving me crazy. Game Breaker needs your donations, people. How about this? You must suck to have mic problems. I can't imagine. This? How about this? How about we break stuff today? Just... How about we just break <laughs> stuff? Hey! Lordy. He's going Keith Moon on us here. Here we go. You know what? All right. Yeah. Here we go. It's driving me crazy. All right. Um, how much time did you guys get to play? Did you guys play, uh, you know, did you ignore your families all weekend and just kind of like, you know, eat Hot Pockets and Mountain Dew? Uh, basically, yeah. I That's actually stocked up on food beforehand. Um, I didn't log nearly as many hours. I know that um, some of Total Biscuit's crew in there were at something like, all but two hours of the weekend they were logged in, and it was just insane. They got, you know, everyone had 24 or more hours of coverage apiece. I did not spend that much time in the game, but I was pretty much in from uh, the moment it opened till the moment it closed. I'd like to say I think we beat Total Biscuit to some, uh, to some, to some key content, though, and he and his team. No, that's good. He got a lot, he got a lot of good content up as well. So um, how long how, did, you, did you ignore your entire family? Uh, did the kids get f uh, fed this weekend, Sean? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I left food out for them. I don't oh, know good, yeah. That's what I do with my, my pets. Same thing. You just leave a bowl on the floor. They just come by. They'll yeah. eat it. They'll figure it out. It's all good. Yeah, exactly. exactly. 
Exactly. No, I, I played. Uh, I didn't play a lot. I actually started playing on Sunday more than anything, and uh, sat down for a couple hours. And actually, you know, what, what I had to do was just you know play everything, play every race, every class. I had to do it, and uh, but I didn't get to get to play as much as I'd like to. Of course, that's uh, that's kind of an understatement for everyone. I think. Same here. I got to play. I played every uh, every race, not every class, but I got to play every race, which was I was excited to see all the areas that we could check out. Um, all right, let's start at the beginning of everything. Let's talk about character creation for a second. I mean. Uh, Elizabeth, what did what did what did you think? Now that you got in there, you got to play with the sliders, move everything around, up to, up to the standards of a AAA MMO. Um, I think that they could have more customization. There are some people who are um, kind of complaining that you can't do more to affect your silhouette. You can just choose from presets, and that's something I would like to see them improving on. That said, it's a way better than the original Guild Wars, and b at a pretty good level. I mean, a lot of it is based off of Aeon's slider system, and so it's doing a really good job of being customizable without being crazy. That's a, I, I I actually found it quite customizable. I I was compared to some of the other games that we've seen recently, especially like Tor and uh, yeah, obviously Wow, but it's old, but. I, I kind of like the fact that they gave you enough customization where you could kind of make a really unique looking character without making it look ridiculous. Mm -hmm. What would you, yeah. you think, Sean? Well, I thought it was somewhere in between the original Guild Wars and something like Ion, which has uh, you know some sliders in there. Not quite to like APB or anything like that, you know, it's, which is something that you could spend hours just making your character. I mean, it's cool to be able to do that, but there are some times in games like this where you just want to play. You know, you just want to kind of pick a pick through a few choices, and that's it, and play. And I think they give you just enough. I was, yeah, I mean, I was, I was totally, like, satisfied with my, I didn't, I didn't spend a ton of time in it because I just didn't want to be bothered. Like, I was like, all right, character creation, click, 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 I want to get in the game, I got to get in the game. Um, yeah. What class and race did you guys first roll? What was your first tune? Hmm. My, my very remember? first one was a Mesmer. It was a Norn Mesmer. Of course it was. Uh, I figured that. Norn Mesmer. Uh, what's funny, though, is I didn't play. I played her for like a couple levels, and then I went and I created something else, created something else, and then I got caught up, and I went, wait, I never played that Mesmer. <laughs> so so it's actually uh -huh. the first and last class I played. How about you, Alex? Um, I actually rolled a Char Mesmer first, um, but spent most of my time on a Norn Guardian a Norn Elementalist, and a Human Warrior. Yeah, my first was a Norn uh, Necro. Went with a Norn Necro. And then I rolled, nice. uh, what was second? A Char uh, Warrior. And then I rolled uh, a Human Ranger. Those, those are the three that I actually got some time in on. Um, I got to say that uh, when, once I logged in, I'm, I, I realized how much of an explorer I am. And I was just like, Holy crap, I don't even want I didn't even want to do quests. I was just like I just started yeah. running around, going all over the place, being like, I gotta see this, gotta see this, gotta see that, gotta see that. What's behind this nook and cranny? The the world that they have created, the art direction, is absolutely stellar. It's unbelievable. It's like it's got enough uh sort of connection, even to players who might not know Guild Wars, right? Like and, and are not familiar with the world. It feels very much like Guild Wars, but even I think for players who don't, especially like when you roll a char, for instance. It's like, it has those hints of like, oh, this is the orc kind of thing, but it's not, it's not, it's not an orc, but it's like, it's just, you know, it's just like post-apocalyptic steampunk, like, you know, slabs of steel. Like we just like, I just put this up with hammer. Like it's, you know, it's that kind of, but it, it, it's, I found it amazing exploring, uh, just, just in, in, in the starting zone is area where there's just all these little nooks and crannies, the conversations going on around you were just so immersive. I was like, wow, what are they saying? What are they talking about? What's going on here? And I just got completely sort of sidetracked by even like questing. It's I was just I just wanted to run around and see it all, which hasn't happened for me in an MMO in a really, really, really long time. And the fact that I felt that I was able to. Like most games are like, here I am, talk to me, and now you have to do this, and then you'll do this, and then you'll do this, and then you'll do this. And this was just sort of like, oh, I guess I'll just go and go on my way. What do you guys think? What do you guys think of the graphics and the art style now that you've actually seen it in motion in front of you? Oh man. Because I'm just going to keep gushing like a fanboy that I, I am right now. I thought it was incredible. I mean, I, I thought it was incredible first. I mean, the, the character models, of course, are toned down a little bit. You know, they're not as over the top as the uh, the environments. Uh, but that's understandable. That's the way MMOs work. But when I got to Divinity's Reach, which is the human... Unbelievable! 
and I went up on a balcony and I looked out over the whole city. I I couldn't believe it. it it's was unbelievable. It, it's freaking retarded. Like you you get up to those. No, it really is. You get up to those high. I did the same thing. I would find these high points and you look out and you're just like, what? Like the sense of scale that they've built into the surrounding environments and stuff yeah. is just monstrous. Divinity's Reach blew my mind when I got there with the human. It blew yeah. my mind. I was like, our peers are going to wet themselves. <laughs> and you know, also I was noticing, I, I looked at it, I'm sitting there studying the the kind of, uh, you know, the, the the cityscape and everything, and I'm saying to myself, well, that's just, the, the way they did it is kind of cool because it's just concept art. You know, it's basically like a painting that they put in the back. Well, that's not entirely true because I see flags, uh, you know, flying in the wind. I see like animals out in the in the distance, and I'm like, that's actually, it's not just a, a cop out where they just threw you know, like a, a storyboard up there. It's like actual game. You know, you can go out there. You can go there. Go to that point. You can yeah, go there, exactly. yeah. It's crazy. Elizabeth, we're just gushing over here. I need to give you some time. <laughs> yeah, um, go, jump in. Actually just jump in. said everything I needed to. Um, I was absolutely thrilled by the art style and direction. I've been thrilled, I mean, just the entire way. They have such a talented team of concept artists, and they're doing such a good job of taking that concept art and actually building the game on it. Um, I couldn't be more pleased, really. All right, let's talk a little about some specifics. What do you guys think of, how do you guys feel about the, uh, the, the glowing outlines on certain things like targets and things like that? Uh, it's done a little bit differently, and uh, I got to say, and also the AOE stuff. Are you guys a fan of the way they're doing targeting? Did you like that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, they were showing that kind of stuff, you know, early on. years ago when they, were, yeah, when they were first showing the, the game. Game. And I think uh, at first I was like, really? Like we have to we have to handhold like that? But I, I don't think uh, it was really a problem. It, it didn't distract me from anything. And um, it just helps out, you know, to know where you're aiming and everything and what you're attacking. You know what's awesome too? I'm just, I'm just going to jump around because this show is going to be so freeform. Like I, we, we have show notes and I'm just like, ah, whatever. How cool is it that you don't have to have a mob targeted and you could just play it like an action to game? Attack, yeah. What? I just like, oh my God, like... <laughs> I had no idea. I was like, now it's an action MMO. I didn't. I didn't even need to like target anybody. I just gotta start swinging my sword around and boom, I'm hitting stuff and dodging and rolling. All right, let's keep going. Get back on track. Um, how 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 crowded or non crowded were the starting zones for you guys? How did they feel, Elizabeth? Uh, can I actually backtrack sure. for just a second? Um, I was messing around with the UI and I found that there was in general options a thing to make it so I don't remember what it was called. You basically auto cast your um, ground targeting spells without actually targeting them. So if I had my cursor over somewhere and it was in range and I used a ground targeted AOE spell, it would just cast without needing to um, show where the lines, where it was affecting. So I actually ended up using that a lot because it takes away A, the glowing green UI for ground targeted skills and it's a lot easier because you only have to click a button once um, or press a button once to cast a spell rather than um, selecting it, targeting it, and casting it. So that's something that I hadn't managed to mention yet, um, but it was pretty Is cool. that something that we just didn't know until you got in there and actually messed with it? Yeah, I'd never heard about it. I didn't know it existed. Hmm, interesting. Kind of interesting how they're doing this whole thing. All right, so what do you think about yeah. the, uh, how was the starting zone? I didn't find that it was crowded to the point, I mean, we certainly didn't see anyone queuing to kill a boss like uh, in other betas recently. Um, but uh, I thought it was populated without feeling like I was running into people all the time. I'm going to gush again. All right. So, like, my first thing, <laughs> I jump in, and you talk to one person. You're like, oh, I was supposed to talk to this guy. Talk to him. And I'm like, all right, talk to him. And I just start, like, going. You just start walking. And then all of a sudden, like, crap just starts happening to you. And, like, I, all of a sudden, it is the way that they are doing quest de de design and the way quests are pushed just happen around you with, with characters just having conversations or greeting you is the most organic. It's not like they're, they're still questing. They're still like, go kill 10 of this, bring this back, sure. But the way that they've developed it is so organic and, and so natural that, you know, you still have some of the characters with a little glowy above their head. And I think that those are, that's only for the personal story, right? Is that correct? Is that correct? Right. Yeah. But, but all, the other, all the other quests just sort of happen around you. I don't know. When, when you actually experience it, you're like, just, that's the way the game should be played. Well, there's a, a perfect, perfectly good example of that uh, in the Norn area in the very beginning. There's a part where you go up this little mountain and you have you can collect these raven eggs. Um, and you can, you know, a lot of people complain about that. Oh, great, you know, collect 10 raven eggs. Here we are again, 
you know, this EverQuest model. But you can also choose to uh, solve these riddles. Mm -hmm. You know, you go up there, and there are these little statuettes of ravens, and you can you solve riddles along the way up this path, and that's cool. I mean, that's like another way of doing it. And a lot of these events are set up to where you can, you don't have one objective, or you have one goal but you don't have one way of getting to that goal. You know, you have different ways that you could do it. Like, you know, you help out the farmer, you can put out the fires, or you can feed the cows, or you can kill the bandits who are setting the fires. You know, there are different ways of getting to that one goal of helping out the farmer. And what's kind of cool, too, is when you come up on those, you're doing those in conjunction with other people in the area, right? Like, that, your, yeah. your bar, actually, you're doing, like, sort of like a group effort. All right. Uh, so much, so much. All right, back on track, back on track. <laughs> Killing 10 bears, collect a couple teeth. Yeah, 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 we get it, blah, 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 blah. First hour though, all right, let's just talk about combat for a second because it's obviously the first thing you jump into and do. Um, I didn't sit and, I'll be completely honest, I didn't sit and try and like to dissect the combat to the point where like, is there a millisecond of lag? I was just like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm having a ton of, ton of fun and I was kind of in that moment, so I, I don't know. But I did hear a few people had a, a couple little things of lag, not, I experienced nothing. But as far as the combat itself, um, it's going to be really interesting, especially for MMO players who've never played Guild Wars. The first thing that I was like, I was confused, but figured it out really quickly was switching uh, your, 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 all your, your skills and your, your weapons on the fly. Like, how much fun is that? <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's, it makes such an interest. It makes such, so for people to understand. Like you have your your hot bar and you have like your abilities on there, and you have a toggle switch. You you flip it and you switch from like you know say like ranged uh, you know like a bow or something, and you you totally switch all your skills out to, to having a close quarters like melee uh, abilities. Um, dodging is super fun. I don't know. Just somebody somebody go. Somebody talk. I'm just gonna keep just babbling. This is a bad. <laughs> this is called a babble show. <laughs> well, one thing I wanted to mention about combat is. Uh, you, I think it's level seven is when you can actually switch during combat. Correct. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So I mean, before that, you're kind of SOL as far as uh, if you get a, a weapon where you haven't unlocked the skills yet, mm -hmm. and that happened to me. Uh, I grabbed a staff. I was playing a necromancer, and I grabbed a staff that the first skill only caused um, uh, conditions, uh, negative conditions on your target. So I wasn't really causing a lot of damage, and I'm, I'm. You know, there's nothing I can do. I can't switch weapons yet. So I, I found that to be kind of a flaw at that point. Um, and then, but you know, if I was over level seven, I could have switched during combat. But you just can't do it at that point. Do you think it's because uh, they so want to just ease you into it and maybe not try and bombard you with with too yeah. much too early on? Well, I think also there are certain items, certain weapons that are made more for uh, you know for group play. And I was just kind of grabbing you know random stuff and fighting with it, and <laughs> you know that that was a lesson learned, I guess. How did it feel overall to the combat in general, though? Like smooth, fluid? Did you feel any lag? Did it feel really, you know, comfortable? Or does it feel like it needs to be tightened up? Uh, I didn't experience any lag with the system. Actually, the whole thing technically worked almost perfectly for me the whole weekend. Um, I really found it combat to be very approachable. I found that it wasn't hard to not suck. And as I played more and more, especially seeing some of the developers, because my God, they're amazing. Um, at this game that they've been playing, um, there's a lot of ability to get excellent. Just as much as it's easy to not suck, it's also easy to get really, really good, or at least there's room to get really, really good. Um, uh, and I think that's fun. The other thing that I found, like, like I said, I was talking about before, is super fun is the dodge ability. I mean, we've seen some dodges sometimes in other MMOs and stuff, but it's done really well. Um, it really works, and it really, really, for me, added that sense of action-y combat that has been kind of missing with some MMOs of tab target, run up to him, whack a whack a whack a whack a whack a he's down, okay, turn this way, whack a whack a whack a Like, I felt myself moving around a lot more, strafing, dodging, rolling, that kind of thing. What did you guys think of the dodge mechanic? Yeah, I thought it was great. It was, uh, I found myself, you know, a lot of games you can literally, you know, press one, press tab, target, press one, and uh, just keep auto attacking until it's dead. Uh, and I, you know, I get in that mentality, and I started doing that while I'm looking at, you know, reading my email, and uh, <laughs> in another window, and then I'm dead. You know, it's uh, well, I'm downed actually. But it's uh, it's one of those things where, you know, you do have to use the the dodge. You do have to switch around your skills, and you have to pay attention. And uh, I love that. I mean, even though I wasn't. Um, doing it at that time I love it and uh, you know to be able to switch the skills like that to be able to, to dodge to be, and then when you get in the down state you know it opens up a whole new thing to where you have to 
basically fight to survive. Uh, and I, did, I need you to diverse. explain. You have to explain the downstate to people because I didn't, I, again, for MMO players out there who haven't played Guild Wars 2, this might be totally new information for them. And it's going to yeah. kind of blow your mind a little bit. Yeah, so basically what happens is you get knocked down into this downstate when, when your health goes down instead of just dying straight out. Uh, so what happens is you get these uh, four skills that pop up on your, on your screen, and some of them are like throw rocks or you know, hit like little attacks you can do to try to kill the guy if he's almost dead because if you kill him, you actually come back up. You, you get out of the downstate. Or there's also a bandage where you can try to heal yourself. Uh, someone else can revive you. You know, someone else from your party. But if you fail this downstate, if if basically if you keep getting hit and um, and you know your your downstate your bar goes all the way down, you'll you'll die. You'll die. You'll yeah. And somebody can come yeah. over and finish you. Which is Technically, like, you're defeated. You're defeated. defeated. You are defeated. <laughs> Uh, I, I love the I love like throwing rocks at people. It just seems ridiculous, but I yeah. just like doing it. And now, since since beta, uh, I believe was it yesterday they announced uh, that you're going to give you a heal on that bar as well. So you're not going to have a yeah, heal no. because what was happening was uh, you know people would be. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Explain it. That's actually already in there. Um, so the the fourth skill on every profession's bar, so far as I know, is um, if you're not taking damage, you can actually heal yourself. Any damage interrupts it, but that way, if like I've just barely made it out of a combat, but whatever it is that I just killed left me bleeding, and that puts me into down state, I can just heal through that because nothing else is attacking me, which is a good way of like rewarding players for scraping through. Right, to just get you just out in the nick of time, kind of thing. Right. Uh, any did either of you? I did not uh, get to see any underwater combat, unfortunately. Did either of you get to experience the underwater combat? Yep. Did you, yeah. Sean? Yeah, just just a little bit. I fought some crate, and uh, um, I, I, you know, you you swim around with your big trident. I mean, it's it's kind of fun stabbing things, but uh, but I didn't play it too much. What did you think of it, Elizabeth? I really really enjoyed it. Um, I think that because there's no timer as far as you know running out of oxygen, it's a lot a lot easier to just explore it and have fun with it. And the underwater map areas are so beautiful and so fun and so different. I mean, it's not like they just took the geography and inverted it and put some fish in there. Like, it's really beautiful, and you have these crate towers that go down incredible depths, and you've got nooks and crannies and all sorts of coral reefs and stuff going on, and it's a really fun area to explore, and it's, you know, because you have then Z-axis in there as far as is something swimming above me that's going to attack me, it's a little more interesting as far as making sure you aren't swimming away from something into a lot more aggro. I ran into that problem a few times, um, but it's super fun and rewarding. What did you guys think of sort of like the con? Because, you know, obviously we've talked about on the show that they're not slowing you down, which other games do sometimes underwater is they make the slow speed, you know, kind of thing kick in, which they didn't do that. So I'm sure it's fast paced action combat kind of thing underwater. With the, Does it, like I said, I, I've, I've said a million times, there's, I can't think of one game and one MMO, especially that I liked underwater combat. I usually think it all sucks and I hate it. Um, but you know, Ruby was like, "You're gonna be, you're gonna like it." I'm telling you, you're gonna like it. I still haven't seen it. Am I really gonna? I mean, the exploration sounds amazing. Am I definitely gonna still like the combat if I'm used to the combat up? Is is it a completely different feel of combat underwater though than 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 on on the ground? I didn't spend a ton of time in it. Um, I know that at first it was really frustrating because I actually got in after I was like level 20 or something on an elementalist. Um, so I had all my skills unlocked. And then to go back underwater and have one skill unlocked was really kind of tedious for me, especially because I was against higher level foes at that point. Um, so that wasn't the most fun experience I've ever had. Um, but it, it does feel substantially different, mostly because you're using an entirely different sort of skill system because they're all meant to work underwater and there isn't quite as much of like at range stabbing. Um, so it, it's fun and it's different. I don't know that it's awesome, but it's great. All right, let's talk about something that was awesome. Uh, by what, I don't know, Shaft, what was I? Maybe eight minutes into the game and I fought a boss with like 20 other people and it was mm -hmm. cool. Oh, who would have thought? Cool, fun, exciting encounters eight minutes into the game. At level one. At level one. <laughs> at le I'm, I'm playing it and Shaft is here doing work in the, in the, in the office and... All of a sudden, he like kind of like peeks over and looks at my monitor and sees this huge worm thing coming out of the snow, and he's like, "What's going on?" And I'm like, "I don't know, man. It looks like a boss encounter to me." And he's like, "What level are you?" And I'm like, "One." <laughs> How? Isn't that, it's one of those things where you're like, "Why didn't anyone do this before?" 
I don't get it. You know? It because it because it, 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 it gets you like that. It's like yeah, oh my god, yeah. okay, the game's awesome. Here we don't have to wait. I don't want to wait thirty levels before the game is cool. I don't want to wait you know till end game. I want to know that this game is going to be cool five minutes into the game. And and in, in literally less than about ten minutes, I was fighting a boss fight with like twenty other people. It was a group effort. It's a, it's a little weird. You know, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. Those those attacking those like areas down at the base of it. Mm -hmm. It was a little strange, yeah. right? Like, I kind of wish I was, like, sort of engaging with the actual monster. But still, every class that crossed the board. What did you guys think of the first boss encounter that early on? Sean. Well, I thought it was uh, I thought it was great. I, I know what you're talking about. The worm was, uh, that was the Norn yes. area, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, and uh, I, I thought it was great. I think that, um, you know, I started Sunday, like I said, so there weren't a lot of people in the starting area. Everybody was already like level 30 by then. <laughs> so uh, so I didn't have a lot of people with me. But um, it was just, I think it was just me and like two other people. So it took us a long time to take that boss down. But uh, but it was a challenge. I liked it. It really gets you in. What do you think, Liz? I think it's a nice way to be introduced to the game and to the idea of um, things just being out in the world because that's something that they've been really hammering home so it's nice to see that very immediately proven um i agree that it was a little weird as a char to go in and like be hammering away at the toes of a statue um as as my boss but it was still that was a little weird right the mechanics of it were nice yeah the mechanics it was still but the, the, I mean, the hammering at the, at the toes of it kind of thing was, it was the thing that was a little bit strange, right? Yeah, that was a little weird. But because um, all of the bosses, even though they had that you know bizarre kind of verticality, they had so many AOE things that were going on and they had reach. Um, so it was still really interesting. It was just a little weird visually to be like hammering at his toes while he's got a hammer sweeping me out of the way. And the same thing happened uh, in the... Um which is the, is the human... Actually, in all three of them. Right? Yeah, in all three of them. The human areas when yeah. the... what's what, I don't know what you would even call that thing that comes out of the ground with the gears and the, the hands. It's an earth and, elemental, and it's called the Hands of Olgoth. I know that because I found a little tome that told me about it and, for a skill point. And that's why you're on Guildcast, exactly. So... <laughs> But yeah, same same thing happened with that. Like that that thing comes out and you're fighting it, and it's 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 chaos and it's cool. Some of the uh, distortion effects that they've built into the that's something we could even talk about for like the the game engine. It's phenomenal. Like I don't know if you guys noticed. If you I know other games do this, but you know uh, if you play I'm going technical, but if you if you play windowed, not full screen, and you just grab the corner and resize the window to anything you want, it like updates in a second. It's like you're still playing the game. Some other MMOs do do that. Not as fluid. I gotta say the engine is, is stellar. Some of the distortions that happen with like bubbles and force fields and, and walls that... Ridiculous. They look awesome. All right. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? Let's talk. We talked early on a couple, couple episodes ago about... Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of, of the, the voice acting. They re-updated all that. Nolan North sounds fantastic. Um, who's the... Um, who, who's playing the female part? She's another really famous voice actress. Uh, I think she does the human. I can't think of it right now. Chat room will probably tell me. The human female, she's she's in a lot of other games as well. Do you remember who it was, Shafnan? I don't remember. I didn't hear the question. Uh, the female voiceover actor for the humans. We knew who it, we We thought of it the other day. We, we thought it was Elena from Uncharted as well. Yeah, it might have been Elena from Uncharted. We're not sure. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, I think the voice acting is awesome. I don't know if I'm still... Uh, I'm not, I don't dislike the way that they do cutscenes. I don't not like it. I just don't know if I love it, but I don't, I like it. I actually like it better in game than I did watching it like on YouTube. What did you guys think of how they're d d doing the whole cinematic dialogue with kind of taking the characters out of the element, out of the, out of the world? Yeah, I, uh, I'm not a big fan. I actually, uh, I like the way some other games do it more. Um, I don't know. I don't hate it. You know, it doesn't make me want to stop playing the game or anything, but uh, I just think that it's a, it's kind of a new thing that they're trying. Well, not really new, because a lot of um, a lot of Asian type games, the you know, the Korean games do that. Uh, it's actually very old school. Examples. It's a very old school yeah, technique, yeah. actually. Yeah, Vindictus does that. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. It wasn't a, it wasn't like a deal breaker for me. That's the way I'm, I'm feeling about it now. It's definitely not a game breaker. Um, yeah, it's. I like the way some other games are doing it. I think it could have been more effective, but the amount of money that they probably would have had to spend on that kind of technology would have probably been a lot more, and they probably feel it's better spent on other content things, maybe. Um, 
But there's something about, you know, we're very used to like films and how cinema, you know, has has developed over the years. And we're very used to like, you know, if you want a cinematic feel, the over the shoulder shots, the cross shots, then the two shot and things changing can really get you emotionally invested. I mean, that's what a great director does is they choose camera angles and focal lengths to evo emotionally invest you into the characters. And that's the only thing that this doesn't lend to is it doesn't have that. The voice acting is good, but you're just going to have two two characters standing side by side. They're never going to change. They're just going to say their piece. They're yeah. going to walk. So I, 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 stylistic choice. It looks okay. Elizabeth, what did you think? Does it bother you? Um, I'll take any excuse I can get to uh, look at more Guild Wars 2 concept art. So I'm not really really upset about it per se. I, I didn't, I don't know. Um, it wasn't the most engaging part of the whole process for me, but I didn't mind it. I liked it a lot. I thought they were very beautiful. I thought the actual animation of the characters was great and the voice acting was great. So overall, it's a very effective system. I just don't know that it's the best system. Did it make you feel like, like were you making any choices in the conversations that felt like they were actually impacting the story? Yes, um, absolutely. Um, and it actually wasn't something that I really started noticing until I rolled my second Blood Legion char, um, because I had that char making different decisions, and I was going through substantively different processes. I mean, they were different quests. It was a different storyline. Um, and that really drove home to me the idea that you're doing really different things each time. Um, and also concerning the storyline, I came across a reading that has been kind of touting for a year or more that they have this part in the human storyline where you choose whether to save orphans or people in a hospital. Hmm. And I came across that and I was surprised. I, I consider myself pretty heartless when it comes to games as far as not really getting super emotionally involved. But I had a hard time making that choice. Like it was really difficult for me to know that I was going to, you know, watch hospitalized people die, basically, like not actually on screen watch it, but know that they did that because I made this choice. How about you, Sean? Um, as far as the the choices, yeah. Did you feel did you feel that you know you were you, the choices you were making in conversations that were were they actually did you feel they were impacting the story for you? Uh, yeah, I think um, I, I didn't really get. I don't know. I didn't. It didn't grab me as much as say I hate to say it, but Sotor. You know, Sotor. I think does uh, it, it does that a lot more clearly. You know, I mean, especially if you have light side, dark side stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I mean. Uh, I thought it was more. I mean, they did actually have little icons next to the different choices that said, like, if you, you know, if you pick this, then this will. Uh, what were the different uh, choices that would go up, Elizabeth? I'm sorry, what? I was reading <laughs> chat. They, they were, they were there talking. Was, the different choices, like when you made different uh, dialogue choices, it would actually increase certain. Yeah. So the way the personality system works is you start out being either um, dignified, uh, ferocious, or charming. And yeah. as you pick different choices, it will increase your count. And actually, something I found out that I don't think they talked about is that there's a hybrid system. So if I'm equal parts um, ferocious and dignified, I'm militant, um, which is something oh. that I thought was interesting. It, it allows a bit more customization of your character. So it actually creates a whole nother mm -hmm. category. Yep. That's awesome. Crazy. Yeah. All right. We talk, uh, let's, let's talk about, about cities. Yeah. Uh, this is where I'll just, I, again, I got so lost. I almost, I, I hardly quest. I didn't even do that many quests because the cities are unbelievable. Um, did you guys, I'm sure we all did. Um, what? It, let's let's start with the Norn city because holy crap. I mean, for, for like a, a lodge on the surface, you know, you, these, these, these sort of areas are just built into the side of this mountain. Um, but did you guys start exploring and going through these caverns and they just keep going and going yeah. and, and going? What, what I find amazing, it, it's amazing. You can, you can literally find some NPCs off in the corner somewhere having a conversation that has nothing to do with any quest, nothing like that. And, and it's like, like they really spent time on uh, and, putting this stuff in there yeah, for no real reason. And I want to point out right here, I'm going to back up the video. I'm going to point out here, as, as, as this is a Mike V video right here where he's running up. I'm going to point out because he had to point this out is that look at these beds, right? Guess what? No copy pasta. Every bed is different. 
Every oh, yeah. and and you know Mike B uh, has a tendency to pick up on these things. I think it's his OCD. Like he just runs around MMOs and he just Naked. his no no that's because of his armor was broken. <laughs> but uh, no, he runs around these games and he just his OCD kicks in and he just sees the the copy pasta. His brain just like remembers. He's like I saw that I saw that texture. I saw that thing. And he always points it. Yeah. And he was like I'm running around this game and he's like I'm looking at and he's like everything is unique. Everything is like almost handmade. Yeah. Everything just keeps, and he just keeps, you watch this video, he just keeps going through these caverns, going through these caverns. Like it just, this isn't even the one that blew my mind the most. I mean, Divinity's reach is retarded. It's just insane. <laughs> um, but wh what was your overview? What was your favorite city, Elizabeth? Uh, I am absolutely a char girl and I'm absolutely a steampunk girl. So the Black Citadel far and away wins for me. I mean, don't get me wrong, Holbrook is beautiful, Divinity's Reach is incredible, but uh, the Black Citadel is is home. I I I, I kind of say like as much as I'm blown away by uh, Divinity's Reach, I'm going to agree with you. I I I, the, I have to be in the char area. Like it's yep. it's crazy. <laughs> What do you think, yeah. uh, Sean? I absolutely agree. I had to call my wife in to look at the char area when I, because I'm like, look at this. This is amazing. Like they have these vehicles <laughs> sitting around, and I'm like, I want to drive these vehicles, but it, it, it like rusted metal and and like gears and, and oh, it was so incredible. And uh, like I was really kind of undecided on which race I wanted to start at first, but absolutely, I'm going to start a char. Now, mm -hmm. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. And like I said, I came upon this big dome here, and I was just like, "What's in there? I have to go in." That's yeah. the thing that I found. Like my my explorer, and like I said, I've always known that I'm definitely in the explorer type in MMOs, but it hasn't kicked in like this in in years and years. It just immediately kicked in, and I just wanted to start going. And the nooks and crannies of things like that they've built in are so detailed; it's insane. Another thing that was blew this blew my mind. Right, I'm in the char area. I, I, I hear I found some tavern or something. So I go into the tavern for no reason. Like there wasn't a quest or anything. I just kind of roll in and there were some things around and there's a bartender and there's nobody else in there. And I pick up a couple glowy things, whatever. And then all of a sudden in my headset, I hear like some chatter in the background. And these guys start like arguing. And I'm like, what, what the hell is that? And I, I, I turn my camera around and there's two groups of char like gang members, not gang members, but they're two groups of chars like having an argument in the bar and they're about to fight each other. And... That's my quest. My quest is to either talk to them, I think, and, and like, you know, calm them down or fight them. And I'm like, where did that come from? Like, how did that even happen? I, I, just things like that that were so unexpected just happen. Do you guys have any kind of experience like that where you were just like totally caught off guard and something just happened? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the point of all the, uh, the event system and everything. You, you just be walking down the street. Uh, down this path and some guy will run up to you and say hey I need your help hey I need you to help me with this and uh, you know it happens everywhere it's it's pretty amazing Alex how about you any of those crazy um, moments where you were just like holy crap I can't believe that just happened something kind of similar um, I went into a trading post that was kind of out in the world um, near some centaur camps and I'm talking to a couple NPCs and then out of nowhere there's just waves of centaurs attacking the trading camp um, and so that was the sort of thing I think uh, Ravius talked about it as well, is where you're going from just being a totally cool person, like walking down the street doing nothing, to, oh my gosh, like I need to defend this or else, A, my crafting NPC is going to go away or my merchant NPC is going away, and B, like the, the trading post is going to fall, and I can't let that happen. Um, so it does this really good job of kind of striking to the heroic part of people and making you really want to respond. And like I said, going back to the art direction on these cities, especially for all three of us, I think, on the Char City, it's just um, mm -hmm. they have somehow, I am not, it's just, I think it's the amount of detail and how massive it actually is because it's, it's gigantic. I mean, you can just see in this video, he's just running and running and running and this is that. I mean, it's gigantic. And for some, the design and the detail is made in such a way that just makes you want to know what's around that corner. And that's, like I said, it's not something, you know, we can make the Star Wars stuff with the story. I think I can agree with you, Sean, that I think like some of the story elements of how they're doing the cinematic cutscenes are a little bit better. I'd rather see that. I wish that, you know, Guild Wars could have pulled it off. But at the same time, I didn't have the level of excitement in the open world in Star Wars that I do in Guild Wars 2. Like in Star Wars, I go objective, go to my objective, kill this, go back and turn in. This had me just all over the place. This had me going off on side tangents over here. Oh, there's a farm. What's happening on this? Uh, like, I just found myself all over the place. And I was, I didn't feel at all that I was ever um, penalized. Like, I didn't feel like I wasn't, I, like I was on the wrong path or doing anything wrong. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's like no wrong way to play it. Yep. Yeah. Right. All right, so let's talk about. I, I, I just gonna keep staring at the char starting area, but I gotta show a little bit of Divinity's Reach. I, I it's just another one. Uh, unbelievably, how large it is, and the flavor that's going on. Uh, the different areas, the different sections. I mean, did you guys hit the carnival area? It was unreal. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the the area that's collapsed and is like under reconstruction. They don't know what. And it, that, that was the thing. So I come up in this area, and there's just like all this, like you know rebuilding there's just wood all over the place and there's guys working and i'm like man i wonder what happened here and it's like is it called the great collapse or something or it's mm-hmm. it's called the great collapse right i think so yeah and then I, I walk up and i just hear people like and they, they're having chatter about they don't know how that actually happened like they don't know mm-hmm. what caused the great collapse i'm like that's crazy i don't know what do you guys think of divinity's reach gorgeous gorgeous i mean there, there are areas where you can go up on balconies and just sit there and stare and like you mentioned about our peers I can see little groups of our peers like being up on those balconies you know and just kind of doing their thing and different I mean there are so many little nooks and crannies and corners of these uh, you know of, of these cities where people can do their own thing do whatever they you know play however they want and uh, and have little RP events or meet at the carnival whatever. right meet at the carnival yeah. like go do this event all these different kinds of things how gorgeous yeah. was it when you first rolled into the carnival area and there actually is the confetti from the CG animatics all over the place in in the mm-hmm. world yeah. yeah Elizabeth just going uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. I loved all of it uh huh yeah anything else really stand out anything really stand out for you Elizabeth in the divinity's reach area. Um, actually, the area that the character on screen is running around now was probably my favorite. Just the upper level um, kind of garden atrium area was just gorgeous. I loved it. And this is actually where they did the uh, the final sort of uh, yes, closing indeed. ceremonies for the end of beta, which I'll have video up of later tonight at some point. I'll get that up. But basically everybody congregated to this area here, and there was a bunch of devs, and everybody was hanging out, and they spawned a bunch of, uh, what were they, like elite giants, I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, they just started raining fire down on everybody and just killing everybody. It was hilarious. Kind of became a slideshow a little bit, but there was like literally, <laughs> I mean, every character playing the game in press beta was in this area at that point so uh Basically, yeah, it was good great. good fun all right um ah, music and sound effects score stellar amazing changes constantly like always moving perfect mood am i just speaking for you guys like are you guys want to chime yeah, in no, seriously like, just it's, say it's something wonderful um i did notice that after a while if i was in a city too long i stopped hearing music um which might just be to keep stuff from getting repetitive, but I was crafting in Divinity's Reach for probably 45 minutes, and after the first 10 minutes or so, there was no music. I was like, where is it? Like, I want that music because it's so beautiful. Um, but that would be really smart I'm, if they actually pull it back a little bit and they go, hey, if you're in yeah. here for this long, we're not going to, like, bombard you with this loop music yeah. for, like, hours on end. Like, we don't want you to get right. sick of it. And um, something that they talked about a while ago is that they're going to have um, playlists so that you can actually have your own music in the game. Which, on one hand, this is the first game that I've played in a very long time, for a very long time, where I didn't eventually just tap out, open up iTunes, and start my own music over it. Um, So I don't think you're going to see a lot of people needing that right away, but it's a really nice option that they have that. So, like, maybe I want to listen to Rammstein during battles. Sure. And I can totally do that. Um, So I think it's nice that they're, A, providing you with excellently high-quality stuff, and B, not forcing it on you. Hmm. Let's talk about dungeons. I... Unfortunately, did not get to check out uh, Ascalon Catacombs. I just, shoot me now. I know. I know what you're saying. (laughs) I know you hate me because I was in the game. I didn't get to see it. I didn't get to see it. I'm sorry. We were launching a little bit of a website over the weekend. Sorry. My time was strayed. But uh, did you guys get to check out the dungeon? I did not. I'm I'm right there with you, Gary. I I didn't get a chance to. But I know Elizabeth did because uh, (laughs) (laughs) she was talking about it. Give us your rundown, Liz. Uh, it was super fun. This is actually my, I, I, I went through twice this weekend, which was my second overall experience with the dungeon. At Fan Day, we were able to play it. Um, and things have gotten better. I noticed that the boss fights felt a lot more individualized, like where before I was really just worried about killing the bosses. This time I was worried about how I was killing the bosses and what best enabled me to kill the bosses. Um, there was a very interesting, I had two very unique experiences with it because um, once I ran through it, it was me and four developers, uh-huh. and that was one level of expertise, and the next one was me, uh, I think two developers, neither of whom were systems designers, and then two other fans, 
or press. Um, so that was, you know, that, that was a how different did, level of expertise. I was say, how did that go? Because I know in PVP, people were awful. Like it was, it was, the, <laughs> people were so bad. It was hilarious. Like, wow, the press is really bad at this game in PVP. Um, actually, we were successful both times. We, we killed all the bosses in Adelburn in, in both run-throughs. There was a little more frustration in the non-entirely dev group, but uh, it was still super fun. And what now, when you nice say for, let me we ask you though, when you say frustration, were you frustrated to the point of? Do you think you were more frustrated because you had you already run? Let me ask you this first: Had you already run it with the devs prior to that? Yeah, so devs was first, and then I went again almost immediately with some other people. Um, and it wasn't frustrated like, oh my gosh, you guys aren't getting it. It was just like we as a team have not, we weren't communicating as much for one thing. Um, vent was having problems. We had people dropping vent. We actually had, um, that was probably the one real um, technical glitch that I came across was that someone actually dropped out of the dungeon. Um, just the connection or whatever wasn't stable. So we had someone who dropped out partway through, had to come back in and rejoin. Um, so it was frustrating more in that sense, just there wasn't as much communication going on and it was just a, a more challenging external experience. Well, that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, fun. that's what I'm trying to figure out between the, the, between the term frustration and challenging. And like, if things like vent are breaking and you can't complete the dungeon, I'm saying that's a good thing because you should have to be on vent. And if something like that happens, I, it, hopefully, it, hopefully it was more challenging than frustrating. Yeah. Um, so combat itself was super challenging in an interesting and fun way. We actually apparently are one of the first groups to have pulled a boss to a spawn point so that we could just instantly re-res and start killing them again because <laughs> we were uh, having some hard times getting the two lovers separated from each other. Was that a tactic? So, uh, I don't think it was intentionally a tactic, but once we got her there, we decided we really liked it and we were proud of that. Um, so it was just super fun, um, very a different experience both times because we attack them in different orders like you can choose which of the three bosses um, you can kill first so we went about it different orders we went different ways it was a different group build um, super fun both times what was your super what was your fun. group what, on the on the second run without the devs what was your group composition like were there any signs of the the much loved trinity we had a necromancer two elementalists, I believe, an engineer, and I could not tell you what the last profession was to save my life. I'd like to say it was a guardian, but I'm not sold on that being the case. Um, but no, actually, um, Colin Johansson was taking a group through, and he like, deliberately told people, pick whatever your favorite character is, and we'll go through this. I don't want a specific build. And they were doing, um, actually, the uh, repeatable or explorable mode, which is harder than story mode. And he really wanted to prove people that you can have fun and you can do this really well without worrying about, oh, do we have, you know, two heavy armors and three light armors or what's going on? Um, so I didn't, there are people doing specific roles. So there was someone who was engaging the bosses. For a while, that was me as an elementalist. Um, when you're fighting the lovers, which are um, two characters that people will remember from pre searing if they played Guild Wars 1, um, your whole goal is to keep them apart from each other because when they get together, they unlock these super awesome powers and they kill everybody just instantly. Um, so as an elementalist, I actually picked up a boulder, which is an environmental weapon, positioned myself next to one of them and just kept chucking the boulder at her so she kept getting knocked back. <laughs> right. And that was me as a light armor. And somebody else who was probably a little heavier was doing the same thing with the other guy while other people are raining damage down on them. So you didn't really find like people being categorized by their armor class or their um, profession, but rather by what they wanted to be doing in the group at that moment. So what did you think of the dungeon overall? I mean, uh, any, did anything really stand out? Puzzles or environment? I know there's like the, you know, there's puzzles and there's also the like sort of environmental, I guess you could say dynamics, things that happen of things that happen inside of rooms that you're sometimes not expecting. Anything really stand out for you? And what did you think overall? Um, like I mentioned earlier, the bosses felt a lot more individualized this time, and I really liked that. I liked that it was a totally different strategy to handle the lovers than to handle the minion master, than to handle the ranger, than to handle King Adelburn. Like, they were really different, and that made them all very engaging. It didn't feel like, oh, I have to kill these four separate bosses. It was like, oh, I'm having this really fun fight where I have to make sure I don't fall off this ledge to my death. And then, oh, I have this really fun fight where I have to react really quickly. We've got crazy pulls. Or, oh, I'm having this fun fight where I have to, you know, worry about whether or not she's casting a summoning spell right now. It, the diversity of it was so engaging. What about, what about the interacting with, like, environmental elements, like the traps and such like that? How was that? That was crazy. Um, and 
uh, a lot nicer once you really figure out what's going on and where the trap uh, keys are. So as you're going through, there will be different rooms where traps spring on the ground, and they're nearly lethal. And they normally aren't there on their own. It's normally them plus mobs. So you have to figure out, like, what's the good ratio between killing mobs and getting over across the room to that, you know, chain that you can see that you have to pull to make sure that the traps stop going off. So that was really fun, and it added a nice another level, um, and it's just really awesome. You also have times as you're going through dungeons where kind of, a, I don't know, not, it's not a dynamic event at all, but it's something that does always happen. Um, like, as we're going through these catacombs, these little graveling creatures would start spawning, and we had to kill the graveling nest before we could continue on. Um, so it, it does a nice job of not being the same experience every time you go through. Sean, what do you, do you think? We'll, do you think we'll continue to see like things like this through the rest of the dungeons? I hope so. I mean, I, it seems like a a good a good formula that works, and I think that that's one of the things they wanted to try out with all these people, and see how you know what the reaction was, and see how a bunch of you know journalists did in these in these dungeons, and see how uh, how it all works. Um, so yeah, I definitely hope that it's. In uh, that, that's kind of the formula. Well, one thing, one area I can tell you that the journalist didn't do so well was PvP. Let's talk about some PvP. Uh, did you guys spend any time in Battlegrounds, Sean? No, I. You know, I don't even know if after it launches, if I'll spend time in Battlegrounds. <laughs> I'm just not a PvP person at all. I, although, you know, I really should check it out just to, you know, experience it. But no, I didn't this weekend. You really should. How about you, Liz? Uh, I kind of got there accidentally. I was meaning to go to the Miss, wound up in competitive PvP, survived one encounter and got the heck out of there because that's not what I was focused on. Um, that one encounter was really fun. And I really want to play more of it because it seems like the sort of thing that even though I'm not a natively PvP person, I would really enjoy. But I kind of stayed away from the competitive side of things. Yeah, one, so one thing uh, I jumped in, and, and and as they were doing it, like if you jumped into PvP, especially not the W Dub, but the the regular stuff, uh, you were instantly level uh, 80, 80 or 85, 80, 80, 80, right? 80, and you've got you know full decked out gear, and you've got you know you've got I had abilities, I had no idea what they were, I had gear, I didn't know what it was, like I didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, I'll just go. And uh, the first thing I got to say is the map layout's amazing. I love the maps. I love how you can jump on. If you guys haven't seen the BFF report this week, Mike B does a fantastic job showing you guys what the PvP is like. The fact you can jump on roofs, off of roofs, into things, break glass, jump through windows. Like the 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 way the maps are set up is is a ton of fun. Added on top that like you'll be fighting somebody and then all of a sudden like you know somebody on the other side of the map whipped over a you know it clicked over a trebuchet and boom now there's a boulder in the side of the building is falling down on top of me like it's it's kind of crazy. Um, I, I didn't have any lag issues. I don't know about you guys. I didn't. I didn't have any sort of problem. Uh, the PV, the, the battleground stuff, super, super, super fun. Fast, 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 fast combat. Actually, Mike's got a whole PVP uh, run through video. He's mm -hmm. actually get, he's actually getting mad props on the internet because apparently he's the only person that is really good at PVP who put up a video because the press sucks at <laughs> PVP, uh, including me. I'm just saying, he's the only one that kind of knew what he was doing. I don't even think he dies actually ever. Um, what do you guys think of the esports potential? I know you guys didn't get too much time in there, but I could not help but like I was just hearing casting in my head. I was just like, and he jumps around the bend, and then he mobs off this, and then it's two on two, it's two on three. Oh my god, he just you know I just totally see I could see the esports potential with the battleground stuff. Do you guys agree? Absolutely, and I really hope they run with it. Um, we saw at um, the most recent packs and other places where they were showcasing their five man PvP that. They actually had a caster, they had DJ Wheat at PAX Prime doing casting for it basically um, live as people were also watching on. And it was super fun. And it felt like it belonged like that. Like that was a good way to be experiencing it. So I really hope that they're able to run with that and that the PvP community embraces that and, and makes that a thing that really happens. The other thing, I jumped into the dub v dub uh, very, very quickly, I have to say. Um, and I uh, like like Mike's experience is the same thing. I guess I got on time. I don't think I don't think a lot of the press. I think you need a lot more people to make this really engaging and actually work. Uh, but I jumped in there and it was kind of quiet. I I did the same thing as Mike though, and I backed out and looked at the map again. Go out to BFF Report if you want like a scale and sense of scale. But he backs out and shows you the map of the Dub v Dub, and I had no idea that these maps were going to be this massive. They're gigantic. They're not like a battleground map that we're used to. It's like a continent. It's not that big, but it's huge. Did you guys jump into WW at all? 
I did not. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I did for a little little tiny bit. Um, it was kind of quiet when I walked in, or when I went in, because I went in kind of on the early side when most people were still, like, figuring out characters. Um, and myself and this complete stranger who I've never talked to before since and didn't really talk to then um, took on a little resource camp and captured that and we're like, yeah, that's cool. And then because um, I actually had to leave at the time, um, bowed out of that. I was listening in Vent on the last day, though, while um, some developers, most specifically Izzy Cartwright, and some press were going through VW when it was like really in full swing. And it's just sounded epic. I want to just listen to people talk about playing. Um, because for one thing, Isaiah was what's called the squad commander. So like uh -huh. everybody from different groups was relaying information to him so he could say, oh, like we're bogged down in this map over on that far corner with green. Like we need to go fight them there. And uh, I got to hear this amazing escapade they had where they were trapped in a tower by, I believe, green. They wanted to go all the way across the map and fight with blue but they couldn't get out of the tower at the front way because there was a mortar dialed in on them and everyone was dying. So they snuck out the back route, and then I just hear them as they're talking about like maneuvering their way through this map to get all the way to the other side. The word stealth golems came up a lot, which was surprising and wonderful, and I would love to know what that was all about. <laughs> um, but they're really Golem like, they're ninjas, golems I guess. And, and trying to get like golems and, and siege machines like all the way across the map without people noticing, and apparently they were successful. So I think that's going to be a really fun thing. Like, I was so excited hearing about it last week, and what little I experienced of it and what everything I've heard about it is really living up to what they've said they're trying to do with it. Yes, and expect uh, more PvP and WV Dub coverage on Game Breaker as soon as we get back into it. Mike B is going to be exploring that to, to as deeply as he possibly can. Uh, let's talk about something that I have did not touch at all. I'm just going to guess that Sean didn't either, since he had kids to feed. Uh, crafting. I, I apologize. I did not want to, like, spend the time, you know, trying to craft, but I know Elizabeth did, so. <laughs> she made a video today. That yeah. Amazing. Actually, on Massively, we just put up a video, an article that has a bit of an introduction. It's not, um, yeah, so it's, it's fun. It is not, there's a lot of complaint that it's not, like, a completely new and revolutionary and innovative crafting system. That said, I really liked it. I like crafting ordinarily, so I don't what, know. What, what can you how... compare it to? What's the sort of mechanics of it? Uh, you push a button and things work. Um, so unlike most <laughs> crafting where you have random number generators and like um, you have to buy all these separate components and put them in and then maybe you have, you know, you've got a 50%, 75%, whatever chance to make it work. Um, it's very friendly as far as things automatically work. Um, so if I know how to make something, I can make as many of it as I have materials for. If I don't know how to make something, but I have a bunch of component bits, there's a discovery window, ah. and it's got, I think, four slots. So if I have, you know, a couple different insignias, which are weapon modifiers, mm -hmm. a dagger handle and a dagger blade, I can go to that discovery window and, you know, put in my dagger handle and blade, and I see that that doesn't make anything because it doesn't want you to really just make a boring dagger. Um, so maybe I throw in one of my insignias, and suddenly that says... It doesn't tell me what it'll make, but it says this is a known recipe. Like, this is something you can do. Um, so I click the craft button, and it tells me that I've made, you know, a, a mighty bronze dagger. Um, and then... But that, sound, that, that, I, that sounds pretty... I don't want to say in-depth, but that sounds like... I don't know, really gives the expo exploration element and sort of intrigue to... That, that almost makes me think that, like, you're going to be able to craft and make some really epic weapons, which... Meaning that... Uh, are you, uh, if your skills are attached to that, that... It sounds to me like, am I right, that the crafters are going to be able to make some really exciting, worthwhile gear in the game that, uh, I don't know, might, could, could it rival like dungeons and things like that? Um, I think I remember them saying that they really want crafting to be able to produce top quality gear to kind of encourage people to take that ownership role. Um, and I was really pleased with it. I was crafting as a level 13 or 14 warrior, and I made a great sword that had, I think it was a great sword, it might be something else, don't like quote me on that, but I made a weapon that had almost identical stats to what I was using, and this was something I was crafting at like level, at, at 20 experience levels of this crafting thing, which was basically as simple as you can get. Um, so right away I was making weapons that were really useful for me, and that had um, more modifications than say, you know, I had a greatsword that had a little more damage, but it didn't give me any stat bonuses, whereas this greatsword I created gave me a plus seven to my power. So suddenly it was a better thing than anything I'd gotten in a drop so far. 
All right, so we got to we'll, 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 we'll talk more about crafting as time goes on and we get more into the game. Um, anything uh, that you guys didn't like? Anything uh, to really point out that you didn't like about the experience at all? Hmm. Silence. You know, that, yeah, that's a funny thing. We we uh, there were some commenters at Massively who said, you know, why didn't you guys talk about the bad stuff? And no one really had anything bad to say on all the press reviews. I mean, there were a couple that. We're getting kind of nitpicky with little stuff like saying that one of the negatives was that it was just a weekend, and, you know, things like that. But <laughs> that's not it, really. That's yeah, not exactly. a real. No, I totally agree. That was totally negative. <laughs> it's horrible. So I mean, I don't know. It's like everyone had just all positives to say about it, and uh, I mean, we we still have so much more of the game to see. You yes. know, we still have uh, two more races to see, which is going to be you know that's the starting cities that you know all of that that goes along with it. Uh, and I'm excited. You know, we're, we still have all of this other stuff to see, and plus the levels. Like, we what was the level cap here? Thirty? Uh, ish. I, think, I mean, you could level beyond that. There just wasn't content for beyond that. Yeah. So I mean, it's so much more for people to check out even before launch. You guys yeah. think it was, did it feel? I mean, I had uh, technically on on the back end. I had. Uh, I don't think I had. No, I don't think I crashed once. I don't think I crashed. I didn't experience really any lag. I mean. Would you guys say that like what you've experienced over the weekend it feels ready for launch because it did for me. Everything I got to experience felt like a finished game that I was buying, you know, if they if I purchased it, what I got to see of it felt completely polished to the point of this is done. Well, I think that's the point too is they, you know, they they kind of um roped off the parts that uh they didn't want us to see sure. you know and, and so we got to see the the parts that are finished and, and polished um i did have one crash i had a couple times i had to file a bug report i had one storyline quest actually it took me you know 15 minutes going through it and then at the end it bugged out and i, I filed a report um but that's it you know i mean that's not that bad for the first you know this is a second closed beta weekend um and the first one for press i mean it's that's not too bad. Yeah, I got a, a, a Elizabeth. Did you have any any sort of technical problems? Um, we had one um, elite kill a uh, elite thing kind of instant. Sorry, dynamic event that popped up, and uh, that monster didn't actually spawn. We were supposed to kill some elite veteran Ascalonian ghost, and he didn't show up. But that was actually something they were already aware of. Um, so there were problems. Um, I didn't have any crashes. The only time I ever had lag was during an elite event where I was running fraps um, full screen at max settings, which was totally my fault. And my lag was that I dropped down to like 20 FPS as opposed to whatever absurd number I was getting before. Um, so technically it was all very good for me. I had, you know, like I said, the one boss that didn't spawn. And again, this is beta. We don't even have a release date. Like we're talking about a game, like almost with 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 the breath of like this thing is done and, and released. It's not even. We don't even know when it's coming out yet. Uh, some, all right, something else to add for this. So this comes in. Uh, and check this out again. I'm like, why didn't anybody think of this before? Oh, are we talking uh, about server? We're going to talk about no server queues in Guild Wars Two. No server queues in Guild Wars 2. That's right. Martin Kirstein of ArenaNet jumps on the, on the guru forums. He had this to say. He says, uh, let me explain what an overflow server is and what it does. It is a technology we also use as our version of a queuing system. When a map or a world you want to log into is at capacity limit, the game will ask you if you want to play on an overflow server. So... You can actually play while you're in a queue. Once space opens up on your server, the game will ask you if you want to join your friends on your world and keep all of the progress you made while you were playing on the overflow server. Hello? <laughs> it's Hello. great. Hello? How come nobody's thought of this before? Shafton is looking yeah. at he Shafton is looking at my notes and reading it and going, Are they really doing that? Because that sounds They're brilliant. Really and he's looking at it going, really? Like, I don't believe it. I'm really not, not believing. All right. No cues. If there's a no queue, yeah, Shaft, you read it right. If there's a queue, it's, like gonna, it's, going, it's going to say, do you want to go on an overflow server without your guild and your buddies? You say yes. You're playing Guild Wars 2. 20 minutes later, your spot opens up now on your server and a box pops up and says, okay, you ready to go play with your friends? You're not going to lose any of the progress you did on that server. And you go, yes, and now you're back on your server. 
I wish I had a camera for Shaftnet because his mind is blown. <laughs> he has no idea what to say. Uh, this next to my uh, call for, for, for Blizzard to just get rid of servers completely is probably the most genius thing I've ever seen an MMO company do. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, I don't know that you're totally separated from your guild members. Um, while we were playing, we actually had someone, for the first like five hours of the beta or something, they had a thing where you couldn't enter instances on an overflow server, and they fixed that before the first night was over, which was really nice. So um, you could do everything else. You could still um, gather and craft and fight and, and retain XP, but but you can enter personal story instances. And somebody was able to actually ask about that over Legion chat. They were able to say, hey, like, why won't this story load? Why am I getting this error? So we were actually able to talk to someone in our Legion. I don't know if that's how that works in the final game. I don't know if it, that was something special because of the beta weekend or whatever. But for now, that suggests that you might actually, you're not just not playing with your friends. You're just not playing on your home server. You're just not playing on your home server, it sounds like. Right. Shaftnet, are you comprehending this? Yeah. You got, you got this? <laughs> Got it now. Oh, there we go. I got it now. You okay? Good. Okay. He looked at... <laughs> I wish I had the camera up because that's what you were doing. He literally, I looked over and he was just like... <laughs> like, really? Yeah, no, it was, it was totally like, am I hearing him correctly? Am I hearing him say that? I don't know, Sean, why haven't we heard this before? How come nobody's thought of this? Uh, because it takes arena net to make this kind of stuff. I mean, that's <laughs> what it, well, I mean, Guild Wars One had a pretty innovative system too with servers. You know, the, it was uh, districts. Everything was, you know, the same district you could switch between or same servers you just switch between districts all day, and uh, when one filled up, it, w it made an extra district, and then you, you know, you still play in the same place, and then you could ask your friends which district do you and you do this. I mean, that that was what, seven years ago, <laughs> you know, and, right. and, uh, and that was pretty innovative then. So it only makes sense that they've done this now. now the only, the only thing that's could get a little, it, I, I don't say weird, but it gets a little wonky, but I think people just have to like deal with it. Is that like, maybe, you know, if you're halfway through an event and uh, before switching servers, you know, you're going to switch and the events not even happening, which is most likely going to happen. That's the only time I guess things could not like sort of sync up, I guess, but it's definitely better than hanging out, waiting for a cue screen where you're just watching a, a countdown timer count down from 500 down. Right. Yeah. Any other, yeah. I, I can't think of any other reason where this would suck. It's full of wind. <laughs> yeah, I sure can't. Um, one thing though would be that, um, he says that the game will ask you if you want to join your friends on your own world, which means that if I'm half, if I'm on the queuing server, oh yeah, you could stay. And I'm halfway through an event that I really like, I can say no, I want to do that later because right now I'm going to kick this shadow behemoth to the ground. Like, you can opt to stay on that to finish something. You're still going to go back to your world and maybe find that he's just spawned there or he hasn't spawned or that the centaurs have overrun something else. Right. So it's so not. You're still going to find a difference. It's not like it's you're not just going, going to get to like you out of an experience. It's not just going to kick you out and put you back on your server. Shafni, you hear yeah. that? It's even more brilliant than you thought. <laughs> Before. It's even more brilliant. All right, moving on. Let's do some viewer questions. Get out of here. Stephen Coleman, first up. Stephen says, uh, "Do you think the Azura and Silvari races were blocked off in the press because of the area's races not being complete, or just to leave ArenaNet with extra news to share?" I mean, purely speculation. Purely speculation. I'm going to say maybe a little bit of both. How's that? <laughs> yeah. I would agree. I think yeah, that they too. want to pace out the awesome stuff they show us. Sure. And I also think that, you know, everything we saw, like we've been saying, was at a really high level of polish. And I think they wanted to make sure that everything was presented that strongly. Um, so I, I do think it was a bit of both. But that's cool. Sean, thinking the same thing? Yeah, exactly. I think it's a little bit of both. And, and I don't see how they could possibly have, you know, like unfinished areas when they're this finished in these areas so i don't think it's completely you know that that side of it but uh yeah i think it's probably a little bit both so uh ricky hannigan wanted to know about uh how big a difference your background choices a character creation uh make on your story he asked this he says uh is it limited to a couple references in the dialogue or are there huge sweeping changes between the two for instance would an npc of the ash legion act uh demeaning towards act demeaning towards you if you were the Blood Legion, but respectful, if you were, at, or, 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 it's word kind of weird, uh, towards you, or, or basically, depending on your, your, your choices, do, you, do the NPCs sort of react uh, disrespectful or respectful to you based on your, they do, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the whole um, point of it. 
Yeah, and it's not like every NPC ever is going to treat you differently because that would actually get kind of boring. Right. But like as a Blood Legion char, you are almost always going to have the option to punch somebody. Like it's just <laughs> you, you're a ferocious person. So um, there's actually an event where you're trying to um, settle a fight between different um, members of different legions because they're all you know starting to get rowdy. And you can actually go up, and if you're Blood Legion, like the Blood Legion ones are like, hey, what's up? Okay, I'll listen and back down. Um, but other ones, you're like, no, I'm going to punch you if you don't if you don't back down right now. Um, so there is definitely just in the personality a difference, but also um, like huge storyline differences as you're going across your personal story. Last up, Billy Buck, Billy Buck, Billy Buck says, uh, with every class having the ability to revive, will this cause the game to seem easy? Or could this create a very unique and dynamic in-group experience? What do you think, Sean? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think... It, I was kind of looking for stuff to be too easy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a few of the times I played and uh, and things were a little too easy. And what's funny is during the beta, they actually have these little pop-ups that come up and they ask you, you know, how easy this was and how fun it was and things like that. And you rate it from one to five. And uh, a lot of them I had to put three for the the challenge you know i didn't think they were that challenging but right. then i started running into some that were pretty hard there was one uh, a char one where i had to go clear out and kill these ghosts and um I, I got my butt handed to me over and over again so it was just it was kind of weird the 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 spectrum there um i i did let my guard down like i was mentioning before where i you know i'd kind of press one and do like an auto attack thing and just totally not even worry about it and then i would just get my butt handed to me then so i mean I don't think it's too easy. I think there are different levels, and it, and if you get the explorer in you too much, and you want to just go out and explore, you'll find yourself in areas that you're not supposed to be in. <laughs> and uh, actually, that's another cool thing is on the map. If you if you zoom out, it'll tell you the the level range of each area. You know, like how what level you should be when you're in this area. Yeah, I did this. Uh, I died at level two. It was, it was pretty yeah. depressing. I would. I was my. I was. I was exploring, just like he said. I went to explore, yeah, yeah. but and I was a char. I just started booking and like looking at stuff, and then all of a sudden I was downed, and then Ed was griefing me. Uh, what do you think, Elizabeth? Um, I, as far as everyone being able to res, I really like it because um, a you can like pick who you can talk in group. You're like, okay, who's the most vital person? So who don't we want resing people right now if somebody's gone down? It also like re really creates this feeling of camaraderie as you're adventuring through the world because whether you just come across one downed person as you're like running from one quest or one renowned heart to another um, and you see someone down and you're like oh I want to help them out and I can do that because it's not dependent on what, what skills I have um, or if you're in big elite instant or big elite group events out in the world and you know half the people just got knocked out by the behemoth AOE you can help out and then go back to fighting him and it just really creates this idea of making it easy to help other players which I really like. Last question from Ben Baxter. Ben asks, does it blend? Yes, it does. Um, should I say it? No, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I was going to say something killer. No. Maybe not in subs. Not in subs, but I'm, I'm saying it's a killer. I'm not saying what I kind of a killer it is. I'm saying Guild Wars 2 is a killer. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I know you're afraid, Eliz. You're new on the show. You're afraid of the internet hate. No, no, it, no, no. It's not that. It's that. It's a um, killer. Actually, it's a game changer. Out there that it, it's a game changer, but um, maybe somebody really just likes WoW, and that's okay for them. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I agree. I I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's a game changer. I've only been it in it for the weekend. Changer. It's a game changer. Shafnit agrees. <laughs> Elizabeth, follow her on the Twitter at Elixabeth Claire, E L I X A B E T H C L I A I R E. I can't spell or <laughs> speak. Just look at it right there and follow her. She needs more followers, <laughs> followers, followers, follow her. Sean Schuster, follow him uh, on the Twitter at uh, Epic Beard. That's with a K. Epic Beard and go to massively.com. And a Y. And a Y. There you go. And a Z and an X. Did you trim your beard? Someone. Looks trimmed. A little bit. You did, see? I noticed. I totally noticed. See, look at that. You look good, buddy. All right, you can follow me on the Twitter at Gary Gannon and, of course, come over to Gamebreaker TV. If you haven't told your friends about Gamebreaker TV, go tell your friends about the new Gamebreaker TV. We got so much Guild Wars 2 coverage, it's insane. 
Go to the uh, Guild Wars 2 page and everything is kind of sectioned out for you right there on its own page. Go to the secondary nav, click Guild Wars 2. There's a ton of stuff, ton of videos and more going up. And stay tuned tomorrow for a very special edition of Guildcast. I'll be a one-on-one -on -one interview with Colin Johansson. I forgot who it was, but it's Colin. <laughs> I think it's Colin. Yeah, it is Colin. I just found out. I don't know. It was, it was like an option bunch of people. I, I didn't know. You said Colin the first time. I didn't? Wait, who is it? Wait, let me look. John something. John Peters, maybe? Hang on. Let me look. I got to get it right. I just... Wow, they're going to be so offended. No, they're not. It's been a busy week. I don't... It just, just happened like 10 minutes before the show. Uh, Jonathan Sharp. Sorry. Not yeah. Colin. Where'd it be? You know, you said Colin. You, you, you quested with Colin, didn't you? You did uh, the dungeon run. Uh, I, I almost made it. No, I just had to listen to him asking other people. Something. Somebody. I don't know. My brain is on fire. It's just <laughs> done. All right. Have a great week. Stay tuned tomorrow. Guildcast special edition at 6 PDT. Uh, and go to GibberGear.tv. I'm done. <laughs> Here's my, this, this thing is so heavy.